will be obviously first off huge win on the weekend. Did that go about as perfect as cut up for your performance against Waller? Yeah, it, it went perfect, you know. I mean, given what the circumstances and the first day that I had to face in training camp, not being able to train or take contact because, you know, I got a nasty cut on my eye like two and a half, three weeks before the fight. So, and I had to find out that we on short notice. So, you know, it, it went perfect. You know, I didn't get touched. It was a flawless, uh, perfect fight. You, can't, you couldn't ask for a better fight. I guess the future first talent battle chamber, you know, a legend in the game, Robbie Lawler, who's, you know, one one defended the title four or five times as a great fighter, fight of the year candidate. So it was amazing, man. No, everybody was scared to fight him, but I went out there and I completely dominated Sean by a different level than everybody right now. How important do you think that win was? Because a lot of people, you haven't fought in over a year. A lot of people were, were really hoping you were going to fight, and then you put on that kind of performance to really remind people how good you truly are. Yeah, definitely, uh, it cements my legacy and just shows I'm the best welterweight in the world. It shows that, you know, he's not just a wrestler, he can strike in the hand. He, he set the record for most strikes thrown ever in the UFC fight, so I, I'm in the record book. That's for all weight classes, so no, no one's ever going to beat my record of, of 533 strikes. So, you know, it just it shows, it sets an example. I'm the most well rounded fighter in the world. There's not a man alive that can deal with what I put out on the table right now, so. You know, very, very excited to share it with, with my team, America Top Team. Yeah, and the, it didn't even seem like you were tired at all. At the end of the fifth round, it didn't even look like you were breathing heavy. Like, how important is your cardio and how good that is in these fights where you drag really opponents to the deep waters and the five rounds, you go five hard, like, hard rounds? Yeah, man, I tell everybody time and time again, man, I'm constantly working on my cardio in the bedroom. You know, there's a reason that I have porn star cardio, and that, and that cardio is just too much for these guys. They they can't keep up. They just drown in the deep end of the pool, so they've never been so They've never felt them, them kind of deep waters and being out of breath and having to fight when you're out of breath. And, and I'm not out of breath. I'm just keep going. I can go 10 rounds. I wish there was 10 rounds of fighting. That'd be amazing. With Waller, too, a lot of people... Obviously, he has a, a lot of the power. Was that something you were worried about in that fight, or were you comfortable standing and trading with him like you did? Yeah, of course, you got to be worried about Robbie Lawler's power. He's the biggest hitter in the division, the scariest guy. He scared Woodley back into an injury with his toy thumb. You know, he scared Ben Askren, and Ben Askren terrified him. So he's the biggest puncher in the division, the most the lethal striker there is, you know. And, and for the public, definitely a concern, but he found out that he can't they keep up with the chaos. Uh, cat like reflexes. The reflexes are a little bit too much, and, and just the speed and, and the pressure and the pace and, and the intelligence, man. I, you know, just like uh, Kurt Angle says, intensity, integrity, and intelligence, the three eyes. And that's exactly what I'm going to have to have a that's probably gone. I know Lawler was only ranked 11, but he is one of the best welterweights on the, like, in the planet. Like, what do you think that win does for your legacy? Oh, it was it was a great title defense, and it's another title defense in my story chapter career. You know, doing things never done before, having the the first family sit in front row to be able to watch my fight, defend my title, and then to get a call from the president of the United States as soon as I walk backstage after my fight. That's never been done before in the history of the sport. So it's an incredible journey, and then I'm also breaking the the record for most strikes. It's like I I hit history three or four times all day, and also greatest walkout of all time, walking out to Kurt Angle's music. So it was amazing. Obviously, you want to fight Booze and Next. It's been well known. Do you think that fight happens next for you? Because that fight has been room to happen before, and then you yeah, take this Lawler fight. Yeah, 100%. The only fight I, I want to fight is Marty Big News, but I can't control if he's scared to fight me, man. If he doesn't want to fight me, you know, and he's going to sit down and keep faking injuries, I'm going to have to move on with business and defend my title against the next one. If I have to fight my best friend, Jorge Masvidal, I'm going to have to fight him. But, but I'm going to keep moving business on. I'm going to keep proving to people I am the best in the world. And, and uh, you know, I'm going to show it time and time again to the people. The people know I put on a show and no one sells a fight like I can do. So, you know, the Colby Chaos train, just like I said on Saturday night, will not be stopped. Get out of the way. With the Boozman too, I know you said in New York you want that fight to happen at UFC 244, but with that, uh, the cut over your eye, is that, will that delay that at all, or do you think you'll be healed up from that in time? I think, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. You know, I went and saw one plastic surgeon today. He's like, hey, man, we may have to recut it open. We may have 
have to uh, do the surgery, so you know, it's no, so it's not easy to open up again. And, so if that's the case, you know, we'll have to see, you know, and then we'll have to push it back to December, the fight back to December in Vegas. So, you know, there's no way to know until I, I get a couple of opinions and I'll, I'll know by the weekend or next week sometime. With the, when you, uh, after the fight, you brought your belt into the octagon. Did the UFC ever say you couldn't do that because they've technically stripped you, but you've never really lost the belt? Uh, yeah, everybody knows possession is nine-tenths of the law. And no one ever beat me for that belt, so you can't call me former champion when I've never lost. So, you know, that, that belt was defended, and it was against a worthy opponent, man. Robbie Lawler, he's a legend, first time Hall of Famer. He's a great fighter, so, you know, I was happy to get a title shot to Robbie Lawler. He really earned it. He deserved it off the first round knockout of uh, Ben Askren, and, and, you know, he's, he's just been the legend that he is, so. He deserved it, but he found out there's different levels to this, and, and Colby Chaos coming to the top right at a different level than anybody in the world right now. I know you get a lot of the division, you get a lot of flack and hate from a lot of the division, a lot of people trash talk you. Someone that was trash talking you a lot was Ben Askren. What was that like to be able to see your best friend, Hori Mazel, knock him out like that? Oh, it was cool, you know, I, I told him to do that, you know, so I got, you know, you know, I'm, I'm happy he followed, followed through with the game plan. I told him, you know, I've been training uh, Roy Monson for seven, eight years now. So, you know, I told him, when you, when you fight that ass game, put that knee right up the middle, he's not going to take it. He doesn't know how to punch, so he's just going to shoot him right away. So we talked about throwing that Hail Mary. He went out there and he landed it. That was awesome, you know. And Askren wanted to be a part of history so bad, like me, that he had to get himself in the record books. But his record's not going to be broken, and he's on the wrong end of history. I'm on the right end of history. I'm, I'm breaking every record there is. And, you know, me and my boy, Jorge Monsolo, we're a great tandem. You know, we're probably one of the greatest duos in MMA history, if not the greatest. And, you know, we're the Batman and Robin. Of course, I'm Batman, he's Robin, but, you know, we're, we're, we're doing big things. And, and, you know, I'm excited for his next fight, whoever he fights, you know, for a contender fight. And uh, I'm excited to fight Marty Faye Boozer, and I'm going to leave him in a pool of his own blood. He's fucking, he's a joke. He came up and beat my sloppy seconds after I beat them. After I left these guys for dead, RDA, Damian, and my, he comes up and picks up the scraps after I did it. So, you know, after they were, their souls were taken from their bodies. So I let their souls come back out of, the, out of their bodies for his next fight. And, and he had to come up after him. So, you know, now it's time to settle this. And he's got nowhere to go, man. Dana's already said it. It's me and Marty Fick Guzman next. Did that really frustrate you seeing Usman beat Woodley? Because basically what he did is exactly what you said you were going to do to him. You were going to out-pressure Woodley and you were going to make Woodley get into a fight he didn't want to do. And that's what Usman did. Was that really disappointing for you to see? Yeah, it, it was frustrating. It's like, why did I not get that fight in the first place when I was begging for it? And he was running for me for three years. And then finally, he was willing to fight me there and he was ready to loot and take that L. But somehow this guy swoops in, Marty Fake Usman, and he goes out there and do the exact game plan I told everybody that you could do and beat him. And, and with me, you know, I wasn't surprised. I mean, the guy's over the hill. He's doing his rapping. He's doing his TNT. He's doing his little fucking analyst show. So he's not motivated anymore. He's, he's old, man. He's past his time. So... But that's why I don't think that's a convincing win and all the people making it a convincing win are about to find out soon that that ain't shit, man. And, and I'm going to expose Marty Fagan for being a Division Two level athlete. I'm Division One, and there's levels for this shit. With uh, Woodley, what do you make of him saying he deserves an uh, immediate rematch for what he did as a champion and he thinks he should be next in line? How do, you, how do you deserve an immediate rematch when you lost every second of every round and the fight wasn't even competitive? You don't deserve a remix when you look like you shouldn't even have been in there in the first place. You look like not even a, 20, a top 20 fighter anymore. So if he thinks he deserves an immediate anything, he needs to go fight Robbie Lawler again. If, if memory serves me correctly, I had to take this fight on short notice of Robbie Lawler because Tyron Woodley had a short throw he was scaring Robbie Lawler. He needs to come and show he's a worthy of, opponent for a title shot anymore. He's definitely not getting no title shots anytime soon. So maybe if, if Tyron Woodley... The little soy boy goes out there and gets a win. Maybe he can come back up, but in the meantime, he needs to go prove himself again. He doesn't even look like a top 20 fighter. He's a bum. Back to Usman, Ed. You guys have similar styles. You obviously like to strike more than he does. You guys are wrestler-based fighters first. How do you think you match up against him? I think I match up great. He doesn't do anything I do as good as me. I'm a better striker. I'm a better wrestler. There's a reason he wrestled Division Two when I was in Division One. I'm better at everything. His cardio is not on my level. Yes, cardio looked good against Tyron Woodley, but Tyron Woodley has no cardio. 
He backs up straight to the fence and throws one punch a fight. Literally, least strikes ever thrown in a title fight. It's a fact. So I think I match up great with Marty Fake News, man. I, I think he knows that. He, he's scared of it. And he's trying to avoid it already. So let's hope that, uh, that uh, you know, he signs the contract sooner than later. Another security guards were pulling it back over the weekend, so he's probably going to be out for another year because of that. And also, what's Marty Fake News been done? I got a call from the president after the fight. What's he ever got a call from? Maybe the, the tribe chief of Nigeria sending him smoke signals? With the uh, Usman too, after the, you guys were on the post-fight show together, you guys were exchanging words. Was that awkward at all for you, or did you really enjoy that moment? I don't know. I enjoy it, man. It, saying the truth, and, and everybody's starting to find out that everything I say, I do, and, and it's, it's all real and truth. There's no fake news. I call it how I see it. People don't like me because I'm brutally honest. That's, that's their problem. That's not my problem. I'm a boss. I do whatever the fuck I want. So... So, you know, I'm not worried about what people think of me. I'm just, I'm being honest and I'm being truthful. And if they're hurt by it, come do something. But there's not a man in life that can do that. So, I need to sit down, shut the fuck up, and watch me fucking be great. And I know Uzan has that new belt. If you were to beat him, would you want that new belt or would you rather the UFC just keep on getting no. that old one? I already told the UFC and Dana White, I don't want the new belt. I'm keeping my belt. It's, it's uh... You know, I only want, it's, it's original. It's, it's the best belt there is. It's way better than that Power Ranger belt. The belt that Marty Fake Newsman has is the number one con contender Power Ranger belt. I'm going to unify my belt, but I'm not taking the new belt. I don't want it. It's stupid. It literally looks like a Power Ranger belt, so I don't want it. I'm keeping the original one, and Dana and UFC know that. In your next fight, are you going to keep that uh, Kurt Angle walkout song again? Of course. It's the greatest, it was the greatest walkout in the history of the sport, man. Did you not see the electricity, the whole arena getting into it, singing it? So singing along for my walkout, it was, it was too special, and it got me pumped up, and I just love it. I'm glad that I got the blessings from Kurt Angle to use it, and that's going to stick. That's going to be my walkout. And just last thing for you, Colby, with the Usman, if it happens in November or December, how do you see this fight playing out? I see myself knocking him out. I, I, he's not getting, he's going to come out and fight emotionally. He's going to try and take me down. That's going to end up bad for him. So, you know, it's it's it's, it's easy fight for me. He, you know, he's already emotional. He's going to try and fight emotional thinking he's going to come out hard. He has pedal fits. He, the guy hits like a little bitch. So it's going to be me getting my hand raised by brutal domination. He will get dominated. It's, it's not going to be competitive. So mark, mark your word. If you want to make money, just bet your house on it because it's a sure lock as there's ever been in the sport. All right, Colby, that's all I have you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Have a great night. Yeah, you as well.